Hello, Lizzie here, and today I'm going to show you how to make Gifter Snowflake, which is a beautiful, beautiful, very frosty winter design, and it's the snowflake that's on the front of this cushion. So we're going to make the cushion, but in actual fact, you could easily make this into a table runner. I think three of these with sashing and binding would look absolutely incredible. Um, I've used some glittery fabric in there. I've also used some silver metallic thread to do my free motion on. Now because, and I'll show you the pattern in just a sec, but because this is pretty much all straight lines, you could just use your regular foot and go over it two or three times to get that density of the, the threads. So this is Gift of Snowflake, which is this pattern here, and this is available as a download on my website, lizzycurtis.com. So please go to my website, look into the shop and see if you can find it and see what else you can find while you're there. So uh, I might not necessarily follow the instructions to the letter, so you might have to forgive me for that because I tend to sort of hop around, but I will talk you through the basics now of how to put this together. It's um, applique, so all of these pieces on here, and I'm hoping you can see this fairly clearly because the light is just twinkling off of that beautifully. All of these pieces are applique, so um, cut on your fusible web webbing in other words. Now, I print directly from my pattern onto my fusible webbing, which has a paper back to it. And as you'll see, that's what it looks like when it's been printed out on the from the computer straight to my printer. And I make my um, fusible webbing just a wee bit smaller than an A4 or a letter sized piece of paper, just a piece of copy paper. And I just iron the top of my webbing just to catch it. I'll just pull that back so you can see, but just to catch it on the top of my paper. And then that feeds through my machine and it goes up and over the devices. You might have a front load in which case it'll go that way. And actually that's much easier. So if you print it directly from the computer through your printer, you'll get a perfect representation. If you can't do that or you're confused by that, that's no problem. You can just trace those pictures, those designs through on your paperback wedding webbing. It's absolutely fine. Um, obviously, this is a little bit more accurate because there's no hand drawing involved. So those are the pieces. Now they're all numbered. So you, what you'll get is the snowflake as a plan. Let me show you. And they're all numbered. I haven't numbered every single piece. I didn't think it was necessary. You may think differently, in which case write on your pattern. But that's the pattern. So on here, I've just numbered the pieces for you. So you've got some idea, A, of the order that they're put down onto your fabric and be which ones I'm talking about as I go through. Um, and so, like I said, they're all numbered. Now, this isn't to scale. You can see <laughs> slightly different. It's not to scale. It's just merely to fit on the paper, and it gives you an idea of where everything goes. Um, like I say, you can number all these yourself if you want to, um, just so you've got a clear idea of which piece is going where. But it's, it's actually quite easy to follow. Oh, and actually, I'll keep that out just in case I get stuck. So let's put it to one side. So we've got every, all the measurements, everything you need is on the pattern. All the sizes, the step-by-steps, the pictures, everything. And you've got this fantastic video as well to guide you through the whole process. So nothing is left to chance. So I've got all my bits and pieces laid out here. We've got sashing ready to go. We've got the backing ready to go. Now I've put a zip in the side of mine. Let's see if we can find it. There it is. We've got a zip. So I'll show you how to do that zip there. Um, but you can do an envelope backing if you want to. So let's let's pop that out the way. Let's pop it over there. Stay. So I've got all my bits and pieces ready. Um, I've printed them out. I've cut them out roughly because that's the idea that you cut them roughly. So, for instance, let me just take this back and show you. You can just peel that away. And for instance, if we're going to cut one of the diamonds, I'm literally going to roughly cut round it. Now, I must admit, I would cut all four diamonds at the same time. So you can see there, you can see the black line of the print. That's how I cut it. And that's how I put it onto the fabric that I've chosen 
ready then to cut out and that's shown on the pattern quite clearly so roughly cut please don't spend your time cutting on the lines because you've got to do it again when you cut through the fabric and you've glued this down um, and choose your fusible we webbing carefully because the I, I ran out of my normal webbing that I use I've used a cheaper version mm -mm, it's not so good so just be careful so I've got all my pieces here ready now I'm going to put this on the overhead so you can see everything that I can see and you can see I've got everything still in their heaps everything is numbered but I'm just going to pop them all to one side um, and we'll do this all in order so it makes it easier and I'm just going to make sure I can see the numbers so, so I can follow it the same time as you and what I've done is I've actually already taken the backing off all my pieces so all of these pieces don't have that paper backing on anymore they're all ready to be fused down onto my piece of fabric and I've chosen the front is the same as the back you don't, might not want to do that you might want to do you know a different backing that's entirely up to you um, but I quite like the coordination when you look at it the back is the same as the front except for the sashing which kind of lifts it a little bit there we go stay so I'll get the iron up so you want a, a nice hot iron you a good medium to high heat these little irons get really really hot so just be careful of that so to start off with um, I've actually folded my fabric in half and, and obviously I put my wadding on my bit but this is taking you through Give it a squidge, give it a press, nice finger press so you've got a line to follow and then fold again into quarters and press and you want to get that middle so you know exactly where your snowflake's going to go and then what I've done is I put my wadding on and I've used a temporary spray to do that because we're going to do the free motion or your regular stitching to put all the pieces down. So if we go for number one it's the nice big piece there and I would say get it lined up as best you can you know we've got the fold lines that you created so you can pop it straight into the middle um, I'm not ironing anything down not a thing I'm just being cautious if you like then we've got this sort of shape which is a funny little shape isn't it and it, there's a definite way of putting it down so let's just pop that down there and because this has been designed and hand drawn by my daughter, very super proud of her for doing this, you'll find that it's a little bit more quirky. It hasn't been computer generated, it's been generated by hand. So there'll be some edges that are a little bit quirky, but then so are snowflakes. So, uh, and that's, that's deliberate, totally and utterly deliberate. So I'm just laying my pieces down. If you can see on the overhead now, I've laid down one, two, three. So now we've got pieces number four, which are these pieces here. And I want you to stick number five on there before we stick them actually onto our design. And this is the only bit that I would say, do this now. I also want you to be really cautious that this hasn't got the backing on it. This hasn't got the paper backing on it. So it's glue here. So I really want you to be careful. Now you might have a proper applique mat that it doesn't matter. It, the glue will still come off, but I'm just using my wool mat here. So I'm going to pop my paper underneath just to make sure, let's get the right side, just to make sure that I don't stick that down on my mat. And I'm getting my number five pieces. So if we keep on the overhead, you can see, uh, I'll try and keep everything together. I've got my number five pieces. Now this sits back. There's a couple of reasons for that. Firstly, this part is, a, is an integral part of the design. That's that piece that sticks out there. But also this gives you a, a guide of where to place it underneath the pieces that we've put down already. So I'm just going to give that a, a little stick really just a little stick and I've just put the iron straight down the middle of it uh, so this bit hasn't stuck down and then we just repeat so again you might I mean you might want to keep the papers on this until you've done this and that's obviously quite a sensible thing to do but I'm so used to doing it this way now so I just kind of stick to it but no doubt you'll come up with your own ways of doing these things just like we all do we, we find our own way don't we so peeling that away now you will find with any of these fusible webbings um, when you 
initially put the heat on these it's always best to leave it until it's completely cool before you peel it away from the paper it just makes it easier so no technical reason other than it's just easier so again just make sure we've got the right side facing keep checking pop that over the top get your little piece sticking out try and keep get it in the middle I'd say this is probably one of the sort of ones that you have to sort of keep an eye on make sure you've got it central peel that back so we don't need that anymore so we can bring now our snowflake in there we go and we're just going to line these up so when I look at the pattern these pieces come off of the narrow pieces here and actually that just sticks underneath and if you get it if this is why we don't iron it down what you want to do is try to get the raw edge against the raw edge of your number five piece and you just go round and you can see it goes underneath the big star like that and it does make a difference using these glittery this glittery fabric and then the different tones of the sort of greys and the whites again I'm not ironing anything down I want everything to be absolutely as perfect as I can get it so there's our first bit and then we go on to number six which is the little um the little v's I've just got to make sure I pick up the right v's for this um let's have a look because one looks like a nine and one looks like a six so <laughs> you've got to be careful which you get six or the nine but it's the it's the shape if I hold it up it's the shape that looks like that with a little flat bottom to it and that is number six let's put that out of the way and that pops underneath it, it reminds me of a television aerial <laughs> if you're that old <laughs> you might know what a television aerial looks like <laughs> showing my age so this just pops underneath and again if you want to sort of twist these around a little bit or change them in any way you do that make up your own snowflake with all the components so that's that bit and then we need on to, need to move on to these next pieces here I'm just checking my pattern so number seven are the little um, rectangles and they just go under there just making sure I've got that right yes <laughs> and they just tuck under and ju just tuck them under gosh I don't know an eighth of an inch you don't want to do raw edges to raw edges just tuck them under I, I must admit by the time you've stitched it none of this you'll notice any of it so there we go and again under there I'll just check my snowflake just to make sure yeah that's fine so that was number seven number eight are the diamonds or the bigger size diamonds there's small diamonds and little diamonds these are the bigger size diamonds and these go on the points just make sure oh no these go on the <laughs> these go on the top of your rectangles that you've just put down now I'm overlapping these you can see what I'm doing I'm overlapping these so the point of the diamond goes over the top and it actually covers up the raw edge or the, the squareness I suppose of your little rectangle so that's that bit um, and then we've got let me see we've got the got the sticking out oh yes now we need our V's so these V's then just go on the edge of this again tuck it underneath there we go so this is the this is number nine which you could mistake for number six but it's not it's number nine it's the smaller little v's now this is coming off my mat a little bit so i'll have to move it around and this one as well let's make sure we're all yeah we're i'm happy with that so the next one is we're going to put diamonds and circles on each one of these points here I just think it's lovely so we want number 10 and number 11 so I'll hold them in my hand so now with these I think I don't think I've overlapped these oh I have a bit but I know I haven't with the circle so overlap them a little bit <laughs> 
but you, you could change it change it to what you like don't be don't be uh, led by me I've just like I say I've just given you the bits and bobs to to put it together so overlap them a little bit there we go it just looks so lovely and as you build it up it looks fab and then once you iron it down it goes a little bit flatter because obviously we've got a bit of dimension going on here because nothing has been stuck down but then when you stitch it it comes to life again because you've got the wadding underneath there giving it a little bit of depth so now this is the last one these are the circles this is number 11 and they do literally just sit on the top of the points of the diamonds of the little diamonds so it's handy having the picture isn't it and it's handy having the guide the numbering system it's all there to try and help you along there we go another one and the last one phew got all the pieces there we go so now you're going to press this down if as long as you're happy with the arrangement let's have a look in the overhead i'm really happy with that I and mean, you can see the sparkle hopefully like how that's laid out so now we're going to actually iron it down so you may want to use i mean i've got this glittery fabric and i think it's absolutely fine to iron down but you might want to use a cloth to protect it so again a medium sort of heat um, and you're just literally going to press the iron down you're not going to move the iron and you're just literally going to go across the whole piece it'll take a little while and then we'll be ready for stitching so I'll just carry on doing this for the next five minutes. I'll see you back in a minute. Okay, so I've pressed all that down. You can just see it. Now, I want you to notice something. Obviously, it's difficult to see because they're all tones of whites and sort of light greys, light blues. But you can just about make out the design. But look at the cushion. See how well that is standing out. You know, if I bring that in a little bit more, you can see it's got a real 3D about it. That's because of the wadding underneath and all the stitching I've done. Now, um, there isn't a particular design for stitching. I would just say follow all of the lines around. I would do at least two or three rows of stitching around all, each piece. So for instance, that's that middle section. Go around it at least three times. Free motion gives you a lovely sort of carefree look to your stitching whereas if you use your regular foot you'll it'll be more sort of structured but you could of course move the foot to allow a little bit of wriggling to make it look like you've done free motion the only one that you can't do free motion uh, sorry the only one you can't do um, your regular foot with is the little circles so you might want to perhaps just hand stitch those or leave them as they are they're glued down with the webbing so they should be fine just watch it if you're going to put it in the washing machine to wash so that's it done so um, all I'm going to do now is some free motion so I'll bring in the machine so I've changed it to my embroidery darning foot and I've got some gorgeous silver thread on here, which actually my machine quite likes. It's a little bit tangled. Let's just hope that it stays nice. Metallic thread is such a nuisance. It can, well, it can be. Let's hope we haven't got a knot in that now. Let's just get that. It's fine. I'll just watch that as, I, as it comes through. <clears throat> You could also use your extension table. So I haven't today because it's a bit cumbersome to keep bringing up and down. So I've just left it as it is and we'll see how we get on. Obviously, you could use quilting gloves. You can use a um, like a slider sheet under here as well to help with your free motion. Um, but I, I'm not today. I'm just going to sort of go for it. So I'm actually lowering my feed dogs down. If you can do that, great. If not, put your stitch length on zero. It should be fine. Um, you can adjust tensions and things like that and see how you get on. So I'm literally going to put it under the needle and just let's just crack on with it. So I'm going to do some and then I'll go away and finish the whole lot off because it'll take uh, about 45 minutes, I think, to do the whole front of the cushion. But I will do a little bit with you now. So um, with free motion, it's not quite the same as quilting because we don't have to worry too much about bringing our threads up from the bottom and being good. But you can if you want to. 
so bring your threads up I tend to just hold on to the tail at the top um, I'm not worried what the bottom looks like if it if it nests a little bit it nests I'm not going to be bothered about that um, but I am going to hold this tail and I'm just going to make sure that doesn't get snarled up and I'll cut that as soon as I possibly can so we've got our feed dogs lowered we've got a stitch length on zero if that applies to you um, that's it just start stitching oh the foot down um, and I'll tell you what I will do put my needle down just cut that thread there and now it's just a case of sitting back and enjoying so keep your speed up a little bit just move your fabric gently you don't want to break any needles and just go round your shapes and if you've like me you've used a sparkly thread you hardly see a stitching at all so that's one way round I'm just checking my thread making sure it's still nice and loose you can of course put this on um you can put it on a jar on your desk you can you can have a proper stand i've got proper stands i've got several of those i, I and this machine is actually usually okay but for some unknown reason that's unwound wound itself so now we're on layer number two of the stitching and like i say i'm just I'm not even watching where i first stitched i'm just again following the shape be guided by that and like I say if you're using metallic thread on a metallic fabric <laughs> it kind of disappears but you're getting the texture it, because of the wadding underneath so that's number two we're going to do three um, because of the wadding it does puff it up a little bit just a wee bit which is lovely really gives it that feel of dimension let me uh, just stop there a second. I'm going to take my pin cushion off because I can see that was getting in the way of my fabric. So just coming now to finish the third round. Just break my threads. You don't have to lift that up, that's habit. Um, so now I'm I've done the centre section there. Hard to see, I know, because of the colours. So now I'm going to do the white piece, which is the, the sort of very angular uh, part of it. And literally I'm going to, again, just follow the design. So I'm holding my thread there, um, and I will cut that off in a second. Um, and you get to a point and you think, mm, do I carry on around that particular piece, or do I come up? The other part of the snowflake and I think that's what I'm going to do I'm going to come up the snowflake so I'm onto the diamond onto my TV aerial <laughs> go around the TV aerial I know this is hard for you to see but I'm just describing that for you so around there around that first diamond back up my little rectangle and then back up piece number three again taking my time when I get to a part I want to pivot because it's more comfortable for me I will and then this second part of the snowflake I'm not going to go down I'm going to treat that piece as separate you, you can choose can't you which pieces you quilt and which pieces you know you, that you stitch on or which pieces you leave it's up to you isn't it so I'll do, I'll do a round of this and then I'll, I'll go and finish this and we'll come back with this all done. I'll have a, a bit of play time for me. This is where I really enjoy my stitching. Very, for me, it's incredibly relaxing. Might not be for you if you're not into free motion. I can totally understand that. And of course, Ideally, you wouldn't be moving your fabric. You'll just keep your fabric in one position and use the free motion to go backwards, forwards, sideways, north, south, whatever. Um, but you, you must do what's comfortable for you. I'm not a great lover of going backwards, but I do it on this sort of work. But when it comes to things like this, I will turn my fabric. But let's just do this one round. 
So I've got a metallic thread on the top. I've got bobbin fill on the bottom and that's a really fine filament and it means that those stitches from the bobbin don't really show, they almost become invisible um, which is great because I just want to focus on the beautiful silver thread I'm using rather than looking at the bobbin coming up and of course that could be your tensions need adjusting as well so it's, it's one of those things where I can say what my tensions are but it won't apply to your machine so you might want to adjust tighten usually loosen um, especially with a metallic thread you can use a metallic needle if you want to that's uh, that's a good thing to do rule of thumb it stops the thread from shredding uh, I don't think I possess one but if you think that'll work for you then that's great and, and all machines are different they're all they love it or they hate it I sometimes find there's some machines I wouldn't do this on but if you get to know your machine really well it should cope perfectly fine but use, just use your regular foot like I say this is all um, straight edges apart from the circles so we're nearly done this first round and I'll see if I can show it to you on the overhead now I'm going to do this three times so what you've just seen I'm going to do two more times so i break this off So a quick mention about my gold club if you haven't joined already there's no time like the present just pop to my website find the link that says gold members sign up here and then you have access to my Facebook weekly events which is absolutely amazing my girls love it and of course you get the free patterns as well so if you want more information there is actually a video on YouTube that you can have a little look at And we'll see if we can see it on the overhead. It's not going to be easy because if I can catch it in the shadow, we might see it. And I'll point out where I've been. So I started about here. I went down, down here, across my, th through my diamond into my V and back again and around here, up. And this bit, I just went straight across. I didn't come down this section. You could do. Let's just pop that under there. So I think you can just about see the lines of my stitching going around each piece. So some I didn't go down, some I did. So hopefully you'll be able to see that fairly well. It's hard, isn't it? Difficult to show you all of that because it's uh, sparkly fabric and sparkly thread. And... But there's some great pictures in the actual pattern itself that shows you roughly where you might want to stitch. So there we are. I'm now going to go and finish this and the whole lot will be quilted. And then what I'll do is I'll show you exactly what I've done because not only have I done, oh, I'm going to do the stitching around each of those shapes. I'm also going to fill in with some little circles and little lines and things like that. Um, because I've got the silver thread, it kind of really lends itself to that. So I'll be back to you in a couple of minutes or so and you'll see what I've done. So I have done all the free motion. It's taken about 45 minutes um, just sort of gently going through the whole thing and I pretty much um, free motioned the whole lot. Probably easier if you see it on the overhead if I just hold it still there for you. So you can see I've gone round all the different shapes here. I've gone round the edges. I've put in sort of looks like sun rays in, in these sort of diamonds here, gone over here. Um, I've done circle designs in here so that where that was plain fabric I've now have actually sort of done a free motion sort of circular effect and done some sort of shading there as well it's difficult to see with the, the sparkly fabric as well but you can see there's quite a lot of stitching going on there if I bring it right up to the camera um, you can you can see what's going on you don't have to do as much as that you don't but I want to match the cushion that I've already made because I can see that now on my sofa 
during the sort of winter time look absolutely gorgeous and because it's sparkly it look even more pretty so now what we're going to do is put the sashing on and we're actually going to do mitre corners don't be alarmed it's quite easy um, so the first thing you need to do is to find the center of all your edges okay and that's the easiest thing in the world and uh, by the way I've trimmed mine down. In the instructions, it tells you what size to trim this down to um, because it does distort it with the, the free motion. So it's deliberately, deliberately cut a little bit bigger at the very beginning and then we trim it down to a nice square. Um, and that makes all the difference. You get a lovely sharp edge. So I'm just folding this in half and I'm just putting a tiny little clip, a little V I'm cutting out of all of the sides. I've already done that to my sashing on one side just so I can find the middle because with the sashing, um, I want it to sort of extend each side so we can then do the mitre. Um, it's just a lot easier to, to do it this way. We can do measuring if you want, but I find this is just as easy, probably quicker. Right, so each, each one of those sides has now got a little V cut out of it and each part of my sashing has as well. And all the measurements are again in the pattern. So I want you to find the little V, I've done a little cut on this, and I want you to do right sides together. So match up the V on your edge and the V or the cut or whatever you've done, mark with a pin, whatever it is that you've done and just pop a pin in there or a quilting clip. And I want you to pin along that edge. But I don't want you to stitch as far as the, the edges. I'll just explain that in a second. So you're just pinning, and we might as well do that on all four sides. So you're just pinning, three pins would be fine. Um, again, let's find the marker, right sides together, find our V, which is just there, um, and we'll just pop a pin in there. I'm not a fan of pins, but as they're to hand, so when, when we go to stitch these uh, four sides down, we're going to stitch a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way across, but we're going to stop and start a quarter an inch from the edge. So you can just about see there. So there's the edge of my cushion and there's my fabric, my sashing, and we're going to start a quarter of an inch in, uh, which allows us to turn our fabric and mitre our fabric. If we, if we stitched all the way along, it would be a little bit difficult. So I, I find that the easiest way for me personally. You might find a different way, which is great. So again, right sides together. I'm just putting three pins in just to hold those in place. And we'll stitch all of these um, live, so to speak. So the last part now. So you'll have quite a bit of overhang. That's deliberate. Um, and then you can see, oh, there we are. Then you can, you've got plenty of fabric to, to do your mitre with. We'll do that in a minute. So just pop a pin in. And then one more and one more. There we go. You might find what you want to put more pins in. Entirely up to you. So we've got all four sides now attached. You can see what that looks like. So we're going to stitch all four sides. We're going to start a quarter of an inch away from the edge and finish a quarter of an inch away from the edge. Okay, so we're just going to do that now. It won't take too long. I can bring the machine in. And you might want to mark this. I mean, I'll do it by eye. I've got my zipper foot on here ready to put the zipper on. Don't be alarmed. If you don't want to do a zipper in the cushion, you can always do an envelope back. So, a little back stitch. Let's just get the, the pin cushion in again. Quarter of an inch, thereabouts, because we're actually going to cut this back as well. So although we start off with exact measurements, we trim this back. Um, and I found that the easiest way, because if I give you exact measurements, when it comes to things like this, you know what, our, our idea of what a quarter of an inch seam allowance might be, <laughs> sometimes is a little different to what it is. <laughs> um, so just to give you plenty of opportunity to, uh, you know, cut back and get it accurate, that's what I've done. So along all four sides.
and of course all four sides are the same so in the pattern when we come to putting the zip in and I'll say choose a side or find a side or stitch a side I can't remember what I said exact words um, it doesn't matter which side because they're all the same so here we go round again so like I say you're starting a quarter of an inch in as best you can manage mark it if you want to you'll see um, as you do the mitre if you need to stitch a bit more or undo a little bit it, it, it kind of you'll, you'll see how that works so all the way along not a keen fan on pins and then up to about a quarter of an inch and try to be accurate with that um, it will make a difference to the finish if you're a little bit um, too far out see how you get on right so we'll take a moment to iron these pieces back so they're nice and neat it does make a difference if you iron as you go along what you're aiming for is these two stitch seams that you're doing now when you come to that corner ideally they will be the stitching will meet like that but that's what we aim for always achieve it but do our best so iron on and the mat up we'll just push these seams out so they're nice and neat and I've pressed my piece of uh, machine embroidery it's looking lovely so just get that nice and just push push those seams out um, it, the seams will naturally want to go out to the cushion to the outside edge and get right in that corner there that's it don't don't press any of this loose bit here don't press any of that just uh, just your sashing there we go <laughs> give that little press as we go along that'll be fine so now what we're going to do is to mitre these corners so this is where you need a pen and a ruler all right Okay, so I'm using my heat erasable pen. We might do this on the overhead so you can see a little bit better. So, what we need to do is diagonally fold our cushion. So if I do this on the overhead, you'll be able to see. So I'm just going to bring this corner over to that corner. So we've got our cushion folded diagonally. And then what you're going to do, and this is, this is quite a this is something that is actually it's worth spending five minutes getting right and get your sashing to sit nicely on top of each other so both pieces are parallel to each other really beautifully neat and just spend that moment doing that that is quite worth it so all of my pieces are now sitting beautifully on top of each other okay so what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that all of our fabric is lying nice and straight and what you've got here is a nice 45 degree line so what you could do um, is place your 45 degree mark on your I'm just trying to find it on your um, ruler there we go you can see that's your 45 degree line there but we want to extend it out that's what we want to do so you're literally I'm just going to move that pin uh, sorry the clip down a little bit is you're just following that line so on the overhead there you can see that line and I'm literally going to draw oops draw with my ruler across you make a bit of a better job of it than me so you can see that's this is my stitch line now you can stitch from the corner out I do prefer stitching from the outside in so because of that I'm going to flip this over just make it uh, easier for me 
and I'll do it this way and that that for me is much more comfortable so again you can see I'm lining my ruler up with that diagonal all of the clips are still in place they're holding all my fabric together and I'm just drawing that line okay so I will, I will be stitching from here right up to that corner and sort of meet up with the stitching that's that's in there it, it'll it'll flatten out nicely and you can see that stitching so you'll go right up to there and you'll do that on all four corners so if we do another one i'll do it so it's uh, it suits me this time let's just undo the the clips i'll put that together in just a second because obviously you need to keep those there while you're stitching keeping unless you pin it <laughs> So, bring your edges of your sashing together like that. Get them absolutely beautifully on top of each other. And put a clip in to hold. And again, just pull that over so they're all lovely and straight. Okay, and squidge that down a bit. You've got a lot of stitching going on under there. And again, just pop your ruler on there and line that up beautifully there and like I said if you're not sure use your 45 degree line and you'll see that it sits absolutely perfectly and, and how I mean that is that this this black line here is following the line of my stitching absolutely perfectly but so is the line of my 45 degree if I was to move that so you can see it there's my 45 degree so you can see how that um, angle works so then if I push that down and then just literally I'm just going to draw across my fabric like that. So I'm going to continue doing that now. I'll stitch all four and then I'll press it open and then I'm going to trim back a quarter of an inch along each one so we've got a beautiful, beautiful finish. So I'll go ahead and do that now and I'll see you back in here in five minutes. So I have stitched each corner. I have trimmed them back. So let me show you the the wrong side if you like so I've trimmed them back you can see there to a quarter of an inch pressed it well and now I've trimmed the whole piece down so it's 19 inches square um, you don't have to remember that that's all in the pattern and actually uh, when you measure it's two inches from your stitch line of your main piece to the outside edge it gives you a 19 inch square so it's not too bad so now what we're going to do is put the zip in which is really super easy so there's your main piece this is your backing now like I say you might want to do an envelope backing that's entirely up to you um, and I want you to just choose a side and stitch a seam quarter sorry a half an inch it's a half an inch seam allowance okay and that's the same when you stitch the whole cushion together the three remaining sides it's half an inch seam allowance so I'm just going to pick a side doesn't matter which side bring my machine in um, I'm not going to measure, I'm just going to, um, just going to guess, but it's half an inch. <laughs> and you're just going to stitch all the way down. Do a regular seam, um, you don't have to do a back stitch with this. So it's right sides together, so it's the two seams, two um, edges, just uh, right down the centre. Right down the, the edge. So now we're going to press that seam open. So just bring the mat in. So you've got two pieces joined together now you can see, front and back. There's quite a large cushion. And then you're just opening that seam up. So you can see I'm just going along and opening that up. And then all we're going to do is lay our zip over the top of this and then just stitch down each side. There we go. Now I tend to line this up and then do it, uh, it's kind of freestyle, I never, I pin just to make sure it's all in place, but then actually I take all the pins out. You'll see as I do that, 
um, why, why I do that because I like to line up the zip teeth with the seam it, it'll make sense in a second so I've got my my zip all the measurements again are in the pattern and you're just going to place it in the middle I have given you exact measurements but really all you're doing is placing it right in the center so it's not going to meet the end you don't want the zip to, to go end to end you're going to have a gap either end so if I if I lift that up or if I show it on the overhead that's probably best um, and I have given you an exact measurement to actually uh, go by so I'm just going to take it from there to there so you want this zip to be right side down onto the wrong side of your fabric if that makes any sense doesn't matter which side we start stitching um, certainly you want the zip slider to be up up the end there we'll start with it there and then we'll move it as we go along and like I said I do give the, you the exact measurements for this so what you're going to do is going to get this lined up um, I will as it happens take all the pins out in just a second but just to give you a, um, a view of what what you're going to do um, you're just going to line the zip teeth up to the seam um, and I, my seam could be a little bit wider I have to say I think quite a little bit off piece there but that's that starts me off so when I when I start from the top here or the bottom probably start from the bottom um, then I know that I'm going to have those teeth right in the right place but quite honestly as long as I've got the zip position correctly all of these other pins will they will come out as I stitch so I'm going to start from here I'm going to go down there come up to the top and come round and there'll be a certain part here where I'm going to undo the seam so I can maneuver this um, zip slider and that will all become clear as I do it it's really easy so please give it a go um, you don't want to stitch so near your zip teeth like we normally do um, because this is going to be decorative this you're going to actually see this um, on the side of your of your cushion so you have a little think about it so let's start from the top and then when you go across each of the bottom part of the little short end of the zip I want you to do a nice couple of rows of stitching because that's going to take a bit of strain when you put the um, cushion pad in so I'm just lining up the zip teeth on top of the seam okay um, and then all I'm going to do is a little back stitch just to start and get my needle in and all of these pins are now going to come out because I do this and I always have done by eye so just get this so it's manageable for you it's not the best angle for me but you'll be able to do this straight ahead of you and you're literally I lift my zip up and I line it up so my teeth are going straight over the top of that seam that should keep your stitching straight so I'm doing a couple of inches at a time not rushing the point again just lining the teeth up with the seam so I'm doing this as you can see from the wrong side that is perfectly correct you don't want to do this from the front so we're just going to leave our needle in pivot and we're going to come across our zip and like I said before um, you just need to I would go over it twice so go go forward come backward go backward and come forward again and that will give you a nice strong end to your zip so don't forget we've got a zip slider still here which is now we're not going to be able to get hold of so I'm going to open up my seam so you need a seam unripper or seam ripper just to open that seam up a little bit so I can grab hold of my um, zip slider so I'm going to take it down a wee bit and just at the end there I'm just going to open my seam so I've put my seam ripper where the stitches are and just I'm just ripping it along a little bit so take it a little way down there we go and then I can get hold of my slider just like I normally would 
There we go. Let's move that along a bit. There we go. So once I get to that point, I can move the slider right out of the way. So straighten everything up again. And just go a little way. Put the needle down. Then get hold of your slider. Because you've made that gap now in your seam, you can get it get past it okay and just get it tucked out the way. Right, okay. So now we come down the other side and that's really easy because the zip is already in place when you stitched it the other side. But if you want to pin it, pin it. So coming down from where we started, just check where you did your reverse stitching. Try to get that the same. And like I say, you're probably going to measure this. I've given you the measurements for it, but just for speed. So again, over, back, and over, break your threads off. Okay. So if we flip this over now, you'll see a couple of loose threads there. Let's just get rid of those. You'll see that I've stitched, and if we have a look on the overhead, you'll be able to see that I've stitched down both sides of that zip, and that gives us our, our opening. And all I'm going to do is get my seam ripper in there, and just be careful, you know, don't, don't be too um, hasty, and put the little ball part in there, and it just goes like that. It's lovely. And you get lots of little threads, which you'll need to sort of pick out and neaten up, and use a lint roller for that because that picks it up beautifully. So there's your zip installed. I'll be wanting to pull those but I'm not going to do it. So now what we're going to do is right sides together. So open up your zip because we need to turn this right sides together. Let's just snip that thread and bring your machine in. I'm just going to pop my regular foot on there. Uh, my zipper foot is actually really good. It's not like a normal zipper foot. It's a, it's a funny little thing. It's quite good for just regular seams, although of course it doesn't measure um, a quarter of an inch or anything like that. It's quite narrow, it's quite tiny. So just pop, uh, just pop my foot back on, if I can. There we go. And just give that little, little time. There we go. So again, right sides together, and it's a half an inch seam allowance. So where you've stitched that seam for the zip, just fold that on the seam and that's your starting point. Um, and then it's just a half an inch all the way around as best you can. And obviously use your overlocker or your serger on this. Absolutely perfect. I'll just increase my stitch length a little. So all the way around. You might want to pin it, you might want to use your quilting clips. Okay. Now normally I would use my overlocker on any seems that I do on a cushion like this to give it extra strength because they get squashed and sat on and even really glamorous ones like this will get thrown about by the dog, the children, well grandchildren. <laughs> so they want to be strong to withstand all of that. <laughs> so I would normally do this on my overlock. Up the last seam, just make sure it's all sitting nicely. Give it a little tug. Just squeeze those um, end seams together because that's where we're finishing. Don't forget to have opened that zip up times I've forgotten to do that. Little back stitch there. Now you could chop your corners. 
obviously that's what you're going to do but just for speed I'll just turn my through just get your finger in the corners pop it through and this will need another press so I won't do that now there we go wonderful batik fabric I've used perfect I think for a snowflake so just pop that corner out again I'm using my Pergamana tool because it's got a nice soft uh, round ball on the end of it so it won't poke through my fabrics well depends on size of stitch I've used but it won't and then there we go just poke that through but obviously it will be better when the corners are cut off and I will do that so poke your zip in if it needs to be poked in and obviously this will need a press and it will need a cushion pad so there we are that is our snowflake cushion finished okay nice so if we bring in the one that I finished, press, got a cushion pad in, this is what it looks like. I've now got two. How wonderful. So this is the Gift of Snowflake pattern. There we go. And it's a download available on my website, lizzycurtis.com. And just a couple of credits here, because my daughter, Adrienne, designed the snowflake, which is absolutely beautiful, perfect for a plique. And two ladies I need to thank as well, and that is Lynn and Diane for choosing the theme because I threw it out to my online sewing group to choose a theme and they came up with snowflakes. So thank you very much, Lynn and Diane, for that inspiration. It was wonderful. And I hooked onto that straight away. So there we are. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you make loads. <laughs>